Warning, this video contains foul language. Viewer discretion is advised. Fuck. Hey there everyone, Zach here with my first top 10 in Yu-Gi-Oh! This is something that was in the back of my head as an idea and I'd love to share it with you guys. My uh, top 10 most useless big boss monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. These are going to be monsters that are either incredibly wasteful of your resources to summon, or giant letdowns as monsters themselves, or just piss me off by existing. This was a real tough choice, as I gathered this through the help of a few friends as well as simply just going through the card database itself. I, uh, I finally got a top 10 together that really fits my preferences and opinions. So, without further ado, let's get started with... Number 10, Flying Fortress Skyfire. This guy has a pretty great effect. He you know, burns and pop on summoner set, which is fine and all. If he wasn't too fucking tough to pull out of your ass to summon... You know, first you gotta get Summon Reactor SK, then you gotta get this Trap Reactor YFI, then if you can keep them out for a turn at least, you gotta get a Spell Reactor RE. Now remember, this is back in the day when summoning stuff like this is freaking nuts tough. You know, triple bottomless, triple uh, compulse, everything's fucking just bouncing off the walls. It's just, it's insanely hard to make this guy, and even more so, there's a Synchro that's easy, that's that you can make to summon it, so it's like, why not just make the Synchro now that can summon this guy out way faster? You know, there you have it. Skyfire is cool, cool effect, he's pretty tough, but he has shit dudes that bring him out. Number 9, Machina Force. This guy is a bigger piece of crap than Skyfire. He takes more dudes to make, makes you pay life to even swing, and he basically just exists to plug up your main deck like a huge turd in your toilet. Number 8, Mechlord Astro Dragon Asterisk. Okay, so the premise of a Mechlord deck is to stay solo on board, eat synchros like butterscotch candies at Grandma's house, and then poop on Stardust Dragon's ferns, right? Well, why the fuck does this card even need to be a thing, then? You need to eat three Mechlord monsters to summon it, and ain't nobody running those tiny pieces of crap Mechlord armies. Uh, which means you gotta find a way to make more than one Mechlord Emperor get them out, and then instead of having a pretty freaking tough set of monsters that can't attack, you, 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 you send them all to the grave, and then make this shitty horse tube sausage snake link fucking horse shit. I said horse twice. Fuck it. Number seven, Majestic Red Dragon. Uh, since we're on the topic of synchro monsters, why the fuck do you want to invest three cards, one of which probably took a bunch of effort to make, just to take and put in a one-time one-hit wonder that shows up, bitches, moans, and negates one monster, and then runs away and brings back the shit-tiered Red Dragon Archfiend that nobody uses. This card purely exists because writers wanted to give Stardust and Red Dragon Archfiend a new form in the anime and make more money for cards in the next pack. But nobody played this red-bloated piece of crap, so they screwed up. How to waste your time, 2009. <laughs> Number 6, Gate Guardian. Now this is a can of worms I was hoping to bury in the hopes that it would never be uttered again about, but fuck. What's worse than having a no power piece of eye candy that robs you of three perfectly good cards back in the day, then just exists and gets hit by a single fissure and dies? You know, you know what, what, what's worse than that? Having it cost like 30 bucks. Because back in the day, this card was expensive as shit because it came out of Magic Ruler or Metal Raiders or some horse shit, and it was super expensive. And yet the only guy who kept it, in, uh, who had it at my locals, kept it in his binder because guess why? The card is ass. <laughs> Number five, Jormungardr, the Nordic Serpent. Okay, so this guy takes biting the hand that feeds you way too far. First thing is that it wasn't even aware. I wasn't even aware that this card existed until I saw it on the database, and and the Nordic Wolf Fenrir was on there too, and I was like, oh, that's neat. They got more cards for the Nordic support. It came out of like the Legendary Collection 5Ds. You know, both are supposed to make the Nordic deck stronger somehow by after making a god, the Nordic gods. You can give them to your opponent kind of like a kaiju, but you don't sacrifice them, and it's supposed to combo with the uh, with the Nordic Wolf Fenrir 
and it does a loop and it deals damage or something. It's a it's a joke. Both cards are shitty, but at least Fenrir has more attack, and you can probably find some sort of way of beat the opponent by its effect of making both players take damage. Nordic Serpent needs to go away. Open your eyes. Number four, VWXYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon. Before we got word of the amazing and badass ABC unions coming out in October, we had these robots, basically half-assed Voltron ripoffs that took way too much effort to make. This guy had a pretty sweet effect, but to get him out is like chopping off your hand and then feeding it to a shark so that it will eat a smaller shark that you fed your hand, other hand to to lure here. That makes sense somehow. Number three, Dragon Master Knight. Okay, wasn't this card the shit back when you were a kid? Yuki pulls it out of his ass, fuses it w w with Kaiba's freaking Blue Eyes Ultimate, and then uses that to bitch slap the five-headed dragon. Everybody just called FGD back in the day. It was so sick. But the process of making him in real life is just a load of fuck nuggets with extra shit sauce. Number two, Armatile the Chaos Phantom. Now, I've talked previously about a bunch of cards that took a ton of investment to make, but this guy takes a shit cake to the whole new fuck trumpet level. Well, almost. Not in comparison to number one. But we'll get to that. Um, this guy took getting Uriah and getting Hamon and getting Raviel all out at the same time, or trying to cheat some way by using, like, fucking Prisma or some shit to take their names, and then you get it out and he's 0-0. Zero, zero. And it's like, oh, well, uh, when, he, when he attacks, though, he is 10,000 attack. Yeah, but he's 0-0 zero, zero right now. Like, shut his effect off. He's 0-0. Zero, zero. He's, he's a complete piece of shit. Oh, we can't just draw a battle. Shut his effect off. He's 0-0. He's, zero, zero. he's a piece of ass. This guy sucks. I'm sorry, this was a little unscripted, but I needed to get this guy in here. I, I am so sorry, but this guy's huge disappointment as a boss. Number one, perfectly ultimate great moth. What a shitload of lumpy turds wrapped in snot egg rolls. I actually have a kind of running joke with my friends about this card. I told them that there's a hidden rule in Yu-Gi-Oh that if you summon perfectly ultimate great moth, you win the game. Because you should. You deserve it after summoning this anal butterfly. If you don't know, you gotta get petite moth, equip it with a cocoon, then you gotta wait. Not one, not two, not three, but six goddamn turns. Why does this card take so long to show up? Is it slow? Does it need to put on a dress and do its hair? Does it need to change the oil in the car? Fuck this card and fuck Weevil Underwood. Anyways, thanks for listening in on this top 10. If you guys liked it, give me a sub and a like and give me another idea for a top 10 that you guys thought would be cool to do this way. As is always, I appreciate you all and have a good night. This is Mystic V signing off.